What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. Behind me here, we have the new 2020 Chevy Camaro courtesy of Apple Chevrolet. I always review this one every single year. Own a 2019 Mustang GT myself and this was a very close second pick today. So for those reasons alone and there's plenty of updates for the 2020 Camaro too and I will be going over all of those in this video for you guys today. So as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there will be a couple different trim levels for the 2020 Camaro SS. First one being the 1SS starting at $37,995. That is the one we are in today. Then you have the 2SS starting at $42,995. And that was pricing for the coupe. If you wanted to go the convertible route, simply add $6,000 to either of those prices. But regardless, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a 6.2 liter LT1 V8 engine putting out 455 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 455 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM. Power is going to be sent to the rear wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual with active rev matching, which comes standard. And the way that active rev matching works is you can turn it on or off. If you want to turn it on, simply hit the paddle shifter on the right. If you want to turn it off, simply hit the paddle shifter on the left. That is how that's going to work. But there is an optional transmission that is the 10-speed automatic with paddle shifters that is going to add an additional $1,500. $595 if you wanted that option, but that is going to add line lock and launch control as well. So line lock being the setting where you can essentially lock up the front wheels, allowing the rear wheels complete freedom, allowing them to warm up before a drag race if you wanted. But either way, red line comes in at 6,500 RPM, zero to 60, approximately 4.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city, 24 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. But so the next thing I wanted to mention, there are several different drive modes as well to enhance the driving experience of the Camaro. That drive mode button is located directly behind the shifter, but that is going to give you modes like snow and ice, tour, sport, and track, essentially adjusting things like the throttle response, shift points, exhaust note actually, and I'll get to that a little later in the video, as well as interior lighting and handling characteristics. So I could say in my short little test drive today, exhaust note was definitely noticeable as well as the steering sensitivity. That is another thing I noticed. It does differ quite substantially between the different driving modes for instance you are going to have a heavier steering feel if you went with the sport or track mode as opposed to the tour mode for instance but either way i do have the six speed manual so i do want to touch on that a little bit it is actually a tremec six speed manual so that is a good thing tremec is a very well-known name when it comes to manual transmissions and actually the tremec six speed is also used in the shelby gt350 in case you guys didn't know that so a very reputable transmission option there so and in my drive today no issues with finding any grab points clutch feel is nice so definitely a solid option as far as the transmission goes typically i will do an acceleration test i'm gonna give this a shot for you guys here although i will say it has been raining this morning so surfaces are somewhat slippery so enjoy this for what it is but here is that acceleration test a quick view from outside of the camaro And so yes, of course, as expected, acceleration is great, but to go along with that, braking is equally important. Up front, you're gonna find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs with Brembo four piston front calipers. In the back, four piston rear calipers, and that is the standard setup. I mentioned it that way because with the 1LE package, that actually does bump the front calipers up to six piston front calipers. But overall, not having that setup today, the braking feel has felt just fine to me, so definitely no issues there. Touching on suspension and handling, you will get a performance suspension that comes standard definitely a nice feel to it there performance tuned suspension with the 1le track package that by the way adds seven thousand dollars magnetic ride control also available for the camaro ss that is one option i wish i would have gone with with my own personal vehicle just because it really does give you the best of both worlds it essentially monitors each shock absorber individually soaking up the road imperfections but not only that but it does give you better handling tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering as well so therefore that is definitely a solid Solid option and by the way that magnetic ride control you can get that with the 1LE track package however the other option is there is a 1LE suspension package that adds $1,970 but that's another route you can go to get that magnetic ride control but either way steering feel as I have mentioned is great especially in the sport and track driving modes ride quality is just fine you 
are going to feel a little bit more of the road. This is a sports car, but it is just fine for what it is. Cabin noise is fine. Definitely had no issues in my short test drive today. When it comes to visibility, people say, of course, the Camaro is not going to have as great a visibility as like a Mustang or a Challenger. But I would imagine if this were a car that you would live with every single day and feel free to put it in the comments section if you own a Camaro, I would imagine it is something that you probably would get used to. So for that reason, yes, it's not the best, but really I think you would get used to it. And on my test drive today, I would say that is mostly true. But to go along with that, though, if you wanted to have a little extra forward visibility with the 2SS trim level, at least there is a head up display there as well. But so that pretty much covers the performance aspects of the Camaro SS. Let's now take a look at the exterior. I'll go over what's new when it comes to the exterior of this 2020 Chevy Camaro SS. All right, so starting up front on the 2020 Chevy Camaro SS. In case you guys didn't know, yes, the front end was redone once again by Chevy for 2020, and I absolutely love it. Honestly, I didn't mind the 2019. I just wasn't sure what to think, but I do like the 2020. I like how there's more body colored accents in the middle there, you guys remember. There used to be a gray or black bar in the middle there with the Chevy logo there. That Chevy logo has now been moved, the bow tie emblem I should say, has been moved to the upper grille along with the SS badging just like before. But the Chevy bow tie logo being in the upper grille is new for 2020 of course. A lot more body color design elements on the front bumper. I absolutely love it like I said. But to the sides, LED dual element headlights will come standard along with the automatic feature. Meaning when it starts to get dark out, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there and LED daytime running lights just below they look absolutely amazing love that and in case you guys were curious there is a new color for the 2020 Camaro being rally green metallic it is kind of a darker green I will say but it looks good but I will say I do love this color probably the most out of the Chevy lineup at least when it comes to the Camaro of course you guys probably know I do have a green Mustang myself it is kind of darker than this but I do love this color, I will say that. And so, but now making your way to the side, you will find body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will come heated as well. And if you want with the 2SS trim level, you will get auto dimming side mirrors as well. And you guys know, as I've already told you, we do have the 1SS today, but auto dimming side mirrors with the 2SS. Looking down at the wheel setup, they will actually come 20 inches, sized up at 20 inches regardless of which trim level that you go with. But I will say the width will differ. That is where the differences come in, as well as the design element too. But 20 by 8.5 inches up front, 20 by 9.5 inches in the back, Back will come standard and again this will all be a staggered width no matter what wheel setup that you go with therefore meaning as expected you can't rotate the tires but that's fine if you're looking for a car like this you don't really care anyways but as far as the width goes for those tires they can actually go up to 20 by 10 inches in the front 20 by 11 inches in the back with that 1LE package so if you wanted the very most traction with the widest width that is the route you're going to want to go but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back I did want to mention to you guys the gas tank is on the passenger side you do have a shark fin antenna up top there and making our way to the back there is a rear spoiler as you guys can see that will come standard for every single trim level of the Camaro SS LED taillights with smoked housings again standard for the 1SS and the 2SS this is probably one of my favorite parts I wish the Mustang had this these smoked housings look absolutely aggressive I love it and of course when you put the lights on or when you put the brake lights on they will light up red but I do love that without the lights on they are smoked housings and they actually tie in with that integrated rear brake light into the trunk and the black bow tie badging as well. But anyway, zooming out a little bit, you have the SS badging found on the rear bumper there and just below it all, dual exhaust outlets. And you will find quad tips if you went with the 1LE package, but that is not what we have today. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> It 
so but now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear trunk there's actually a couple different ways to do that you can either press the button on the key fob twice as instructed by the key fob and that is one way you can open up or there is actually a rubberized button just above the license plate that is kind of hidden but it is there so that's that's the other way you can open up that rear trunk but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 9.1 cubic feet for the coupe and 7.3 cubic feet if you went with a convertible it is a little bit higher of an entry point but still even if you were a little shorter i wouldn't imagine you would have any issues there but if that was not enough space for you those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it then make your way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 29.9 inches so for reference, I'll give this a shot for you guys. I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Not a ton of space, but then again, it does have more than the Mustang, which is an even 29 inches. So either way, really, the rear seats are unusable except for maybe storage. And by the way, there is some little cubby storage back there if you wanted it. But really, the rear seats are going to be left for very small children or perhaps a car seat. If you were to fold up the passenger seat, you could probably put a car seat back there. But really, it's just for storage, essentially. But to the make your way to the front seats, heated and ventilated front seats will come standard with the 2SS as well as memory settings. That is nice. Recaro bucket seats are available with a suede and leather combination. That is going to be with the 1LE package if you wanted to go that route. Otherwise, you still do have power driver and passenger seats with the 1SS that we have today. And that is going to come with a two-toned cloth finish. You have the gray accents on the black seating as well. So honestly, in my short test drive today, these seats are perfectly comfortable. So I've had no issues. Then taking a look up front at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is also heated if you went with the 2ss and suede wrapped if you went with the 1le but overall it is leather wrapped in the 1ss that we have today i do like the ss badging at the bottom and of course you guys can see it is a flat bottom as well love that and again just behind it you do have those rev match buttons because the six-speed manual does come with rev matching as previously noted but let's go ahead and make our way to the startup here let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your Chevy logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and again that button to pop the rear hatch but all in all it is all keyless access basically so you can simply just keep the key in your pocket if you wanted to all I'm going to do is just simply put my foot on the braking clutch and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there but once started up gauges will do a full sweep tachometers on your left speedometers on your right there is a large digital display front and center which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there that's going to give you a ton of different things you could check out of course a digital speedometer trip a trip b when you need your next oil change and your driving modes i of course already showed you guys that as well so really a ton of different information you could check out up there touching on overall interior quality really the one ss is basically a driver's car it is pretty basic um not a bad thing i do like the frameless rear view mirror you're also getting get led interior lighting up on the roof as well but if you really wanted some added amenities go with the 2ss trim level here is why you're going to get ambient lighting dual zone climate control illuminated sill plates and auto dimming rear view mirror and i did want to mention you can actually get a power moonroof either way for an additional 995 dollars so that's pretty nice actually because a lot of the other muscle cars like for instance the mustang does not offer a power moonroof so i do like that the camaro does that's pretty cool but all in all like the silver accents around the air vents there's a leather shift boot there's also that drive mode button electric parking brake 12 volt power outlet if you wanted it just behind that you're going to have two cup holders and the center armrest does have a little bit of storage underneath but it's not all that much but it is there if you needed it so that's pretty cool but now let's make our way to the tech display chevy always does this really good eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard along with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto and apple carplay again standard also factory navigation system you can have for an additional 495 dollars although if you have a smartphone you honestly don't need it of course because of android auto and apple carplay giving you free navigation so but if you lived up in the mountains perhaps the factory navigation is better for you and that's fine you can also check out a bunch of different apps up there there's some weather updates if you wanted it radio information of course and by the way when it comes to the sound system six speakers will come standard on the 1ss nine speaker bose sound system with the 2ss but i will say we do have that 1ss of course so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the camera once again let's go ahead and test out the clarity of this 2020 chevy camaro ss sound system 
Honestly, not that bad for a six speaker sound system. There was a decent amount of bass there. Of course, with the Bose, that's gonna be pretty freaking awesome, but the six speaker actually surprised me a little bit there. So that'll actually work quite well for the Camaro. But so then last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the Camaro in reverse, by the way, to put the Camaro in reverse, what you're gonna wanna do is simply press down on the brake and clutch and slide the shifter into the upper right-hand corner. And when you do that, that will give you a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also driver and passenger knee airbags as well. That definitely doesn't come standard on every vehicle. In the back, you're gonna find latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also, as I mentioned, there is an electronic parking brake and Chevy also does something called teen driver mode. That is essentially where if you let your teen driver drive your Camaro SS, they are then restricted from turning off the safety features for doing burnouts or drifting or whatever. If they are to do that, it gets logged in the system so that when you come back in the Camaro, you can then see that they did that. So I did want to mention that, but also 2SS trim level is going to add forward collision alert, lane change alert with side blind zone alert, and rear cross traffic alert with rear park assist. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you are into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you like. Hope you guys liked that I tried to match the car a little bit. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.